The first attempt was interesting. Fascinating. The first attempt at being professionless was, I was given the option, what sort of career would you like to choose? I said, well, um, my first choice of career would be, uh, I'd like to open windows. <laughs> open windows? What sort of a career choice is that? I just like to open windows. There's so many windows that are closed. Very claustrophobic. All kinds of windows. Academic windows, synopsis windows, bibliographic windows, 700 page windows, windows that somehow transform education into this wonderfully claustrophobic process. All kinds of windows. I'd like to open windows. What sort of window would you like to open? The fact that activism is not well for free investment on half a candle and walking on the road after every movement. And when the Monday court hearing happens, the candle runs out in your back in your profession with the better things to do. A little Sunday afternoon activism is good for health. It's not this excellent. <laughs> it's, 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 really, it's really beautiful. It's like activism. Little dedication of a Brian Adams song in some sexy festival. And I'm just generally call it, this is for human rights. Look into my eyes and you shall see whose eyes and why should I see. Hey, hello. Are you opening windows? Hey, whose windows are you opening? Which window are you carrying? The window that made you ask the question? That each time resistance is passive, it could still be very active and very vocal. Each time you are talking about a sense of revolution that flows from the gun, the sense of revolution still precedes the flowing from the gun. Each time you are confronted and threatened with that fundamentally uncouth question of the fact that dialectic is the reason behind asking the question and not shoving the question itself. Did you ask the question? There was this wonderful insidious man called Arendt Tagore. One day he whispered in Kalpana Chakma's ears, open window. Kalpana said, you've long died. Long back, they circulated an email saying that apparently your national anthem of my country is for King George V or some related academic bullshit. It's a five paragraph poem, for heaven's sake, read the other four paragraphs. <laughs> Only the first one is constitutional, the other one's an institution. <laughs> they go looked at Kalpana and said, I have a story to tell you. Kalpana said, what story? Well, the story is very simple. Once upon a time, in a kingdom, a king said, I wouldn't like to walk and soil my feet with this dirt all over. I want the speak and span feet, a clean, clean pair of legs that kind of traverses all kind of geography. And I want an absolutely clean leg, this, this dirt, this, this related muck. I don't want them on my leg. The ministers went over time in order to search for a solution how to essentially stop the king's leg from being soiled. They first watered the earth. So much of water, so much of water, entirely so much of water that the water ran out and the dirt came back. Then they took huge broom streets, one million of them, infinity, almost a million Pythagoras trying to find out about million right angle triangles, but somehow it couldn't be solved. The dirt still came back from all quarters. Then few more said, well, well, we have a solution. We'll pack the earth. How do you pack it? How do you pack it? There's so many ways to pack. There's so many ways. The right way, the wrong way, the Bosco way. There's so many ways to back the earth. Dialectical way, ideological way, PhD way, postdoc way. Look the last two being the most confused ones. There's so many ways to back the earth. The theorized way, the artistic way, the intellectual way, the subtext way, 
the metaphorical way, almost like when you were young, you understood being forthright and less successful means you say hi. Being forthright and a little more successful means saying hi. Being forthright and a little more successful means saying hi. Not being forthright and really being successful is saying hi. And being so fundamentally successful that you go minimalistic. You forgot everything about Gandhi, just kept the minimalism bit in your lovely manicured, pedicured Ohio accent and then just <laughs> Hi or hi. Nobody understood. It's minimalistic, no? It's subtle. <laughs> so beautifully subtle. Wonderful. <laughs> You called underprivileged underclass. Because <laughs> when you were a child, you understood two words. One straight line, another lin piao line. <laughs> <laughs> two lines. This line and that line. There's one more line. The normal one. <laughs> the one thing which we missed the bus. Official left behinds. <laughs> uh, uh, hello! All the ministers told the king, we can't pack the earth. Anil Agarwal, no Anil Agarwal, we can't pack <laughs> We just can't pack the earth. I'm just tired of telling you the world that Vedanta can't be the name of an university. I'm just tired of telling the world that enough weavers committing suicide parallelly to the amount of farmers in Vidarbha. Make the movement stop. Don't be in glorious isolation. Everybody loves a good drought everywhere in the country, not just in a penguin book. <laughs> talk, yeah? Make them talk. The king said, hey, hello. Who are you? Who are you? I can't hear your asides. That's only meant for Lawrence Olivia, BBC, 1960s, Hamlet, for English honours, BA, MA and elsewhere. <laughs> Quickly give me a solution. We'll go back home. So the ministers racked their head like they always do. They moved on their heads. A little, little normal heads. Heads where ideas encounter so much that then the word idea disappears and counter mm -hmm. All kinds of head. And finally, the dejected ones went back home, really dejected. The objective ones get back home, objectified. The subjective ones, anyways, never spoke much anyways. <laughs> the silent ones, and I need to hold their silence so long back, they're looking for eyes for 9,000 years of age. Just write that. The IA junkies. Sending our priests, keynote address revolutionaries, abstract writers for five DC seminars with second day secret free agreement. If you face pay for six other rupees and more. Great seminar junkies in the long tradition of giving a speech. Editors stuck in editing films, jump cuts. To the new two gods, Christ and Buddha. Documentary filmmaker said all kinds of footage at egalitarian. Hello, there's a cheese pen in this text, sir. And finally, a young cobbler came. Not older than the cobbler. How does age matter? Gave him Marcus. Marcus said everything else in magic reality. He said Marcus himself. So finally, a young, elderly, old, fairly young, almost young, generally young cobbler came and said, Sir, your Excellency, MLA, MP, whichever name you like to, I have a solution. The king said, you have a solution? Cobblers have a solution? Are you underclass? <laughs> Are you confused? <laughs> Are you Navajo Hassan? Hey, hello, what solution do you have? Are you Vijayan Indulkar, Preet Hassan and Post Hassan? Huh? Who are you? Hello, uh, who are you? No, no, which, which profession do you fall under? How, how, how will I uh, uh, categorize you? How will I package you? 
uh, uh, what, what do I call it? Subaltern, subversive, subverse, alter, sub, alternative, no alternative. <laughs> <laughs> Processes in between. It's called supply chain management, which is why we take 10 lakhs for two year MBA. Sir! <laughs> to understand, sir, how can you stop theorizing? You are a creature of theory, sir. <laughs> right to disinformation came before the right to information. Sir! <laughs> You're right. 
I never looked at it that way. You know, my point of view is so warped. Well, the Kabla, what he did was the final part of the thinking that we do in this kingdom. The thinking that kind of churns in the cauldron and finally comes out. So you the, you, you, you that perfect example of an underclass who would actually who would actually help, who were, not you. Were is a metaphor, huh? You were helped process by process, step by step, and finally we gave that right kind of sperm in your head for the thought sperm to leap out of Kumar Sambhav and finally wrap my legs. So go home. <laughs> Misters, let's celebrate the invention of the shoe. This is the first shoe in the world. Later on it shall have many purposes. One shall be the cottage industry of throwing it to home ministers all over the world. <laughs> shall be looking at two kinds of forest, one of William Shakespeare's Tempest and others called George W. Bush. We'll throw all kinds of shoes in all kinds of places, some DJs, some RJs, some PJs. Ask the people in Lower Parade. They'll tell you better. And the king celebrated. All kinds of celebration. Look at Daniel Dak. Little Jack Daniel. All kinds of celebrations. And it disappeared. And my window still couldn't remain open. They kept opening windows. They kept shutting it back. Just shutting it back and telling me, you can't keep windows open. You have to have brackets. Degree, pedigree, you've got to, you've got to earn to win in those open. You can't just open it generally. Fair enough. It's time to move to the second profession. <laughs>